By this point, you have learned that blood glucose can change for lots of different reasons, especially after eating carbohydrates. Insulin is the way we balance the changes from carbs to keep the blood glucose from getting too high. But how exactly does insulin work? Our bodies need insulin to balance the glucose from two different sources. One, the glucose from the food we eat, which comes from carbs, and two, glucose that is made naturally by our own body. There are two main types of insulin that we prescribe for people with type 1 diabetes, rapid-acting insulin and long-acting insulin. Rapid-acting insulin is also known as bolus insulin, and long-acting insulin is also known as basal insulin. Basal insulin, the long-acting type, is the background insulin that handles normal bodily functions regardless of the food we eat. Basal insulin works throughout the day to maintain a low level of insulin in the body. It is usually delivered via injection once per day, most often at bedtime. The amount of basal insulin is measured in units of insulin and referred to as the basal dose. The basal dose generally stays the same from day to day. Your diabetes care team will determine the dose of basal insulin that is right for your child, and they will help if that amount needs to be changed. There are many reasons a basal insulin dose might need to be changed, including activity level, age, and physical growth. The diabetes care team will review blood glucose logs at each clinic visit and determine whether the basal dose needs to be changed. This can also be done over the phone between appointments if there are immediate problems that need to be addressed. Most brands of basal insulin last around 24 hours. Basal insulin has no peak, which means it works at the same level consistently through the whole day. Bolus insulin, the rapid-acting type, is given with meals to cover carbohydrates and to correct high blood glucoses. When we say cover carbs, we mean giving insulin to cover the carbs that will be eaten. Bolus insulin is also measured in units, and the amount needed changes with every dose. Unlike basal insulin, the amount of bolus insulin that someone needs depends on what kind of meal is being eaten, how many carbs are in the meal, and if their blood glucose is high before they start eating. We'll discuss how to calculate an exact dose of bolus insulin in a later video. Bolus insulin works quickly. It starts working within 15 to 30 minutes, and it peaks within 30 to 90 minutes of the dose, which means it is working strongest at that time. Each dose usually lasts for around three hours before it wears off. This three-hour window of time is referred to as insulin on board. It's not a good idea to give more insulin without looking at how much insulin is on board, since the first dose hasn't worn off and the blood glucose has not stabilized. If bolus insulin doses overlap, we call it stacking doses. Stacking doses can be unpredictable and it can cause low blood glucose, so it's best to avoid giving too many correction doses. Let's take a look at what happens to blood glucose when insulin is given. This red line represents your blood glucose level. When you eat carbs, the level rises. If you stopped giving basal insulin, the body's natural glucose level would be high all the time, and eating could cause it to rise even higher. If you stopped giving bolus insulin, the level would not come down after eating, and it would continue to rise each time you ate. Both forms of insulin are needed to keep your blood glucose safely within the target blood glucose range. In the next video, we'll talk about the specifics of using a child's carb ratio and correction factor to do the math for bolus insulin doses.